Hi, I'm Dawn Morse, the founder of Core Elements Training. In this video, we're going to demonstrate common places for wider trigger points on the back region. In a previous video, we've demonstrated how to complete the trigger point technique, but in this video, we're focusing on identifying key common trigger points. We can develop trigger points absolutely anywhere within the body, but when we look at a trigger point chart, we'll often find that there are common areas where a lot of people will develop these trigger points, and they might link to certain conditions such as generalized neck pain, such as migraines or headaches, restricted range of motion, or um, wider generalized lower back pain, for example. Um, when it comes to our trigger points, our trigger points can be latent or active in nature. When we're referring to latent trigger points, these are areas that feel pain-free until we palpate them. And on palpation, that might increase the client's pain sensation, and it might stay as a local sensation, or it might radiate to other parts of the body. Or the trigger point might be active in nature. And when it's active in nature, that might be when your client comes in and they say, I've got this pain in my shoulder and it just won't go away. It doesn't matter what I do, it just won't go away. I've tried stretching, etc., cetera, um, but to no success. And in those instances, we might be thinking, ah, the client's trigger point in their upper traps might be active, causing that headache or causing that generalized pain sensation. So there's different ways that we can compress our trigger points, um, but the key thing from this video is to identify um, where some of these common trigger points might be. And the first trigger point that we're going to look to identify is your quadratus lumborum psoas common trigger point. In that instance, the QL psoas trigger point might be active if your client is experiencing generalized lower back pain or restricted range of motion around the lower back area. Now, to identify where this trigger point is, it's quite often useful to feel for the client's bottom rib. Okay, so you're going to come to the side of the body, feel for where their lower rib is or their bottom rib is, and then from here you're going to follow along the rib line towards the vertebrae. So keep coming in towards that rib line, towards the vertebrae. Then you'll feel where the muscle tissue starts. Come in slightly further from that, still heading towards the vertebrae. So I'm trying to get my two fingers um, in different places here. So you can see that this finger is on the spinous process. This finger is on the muscle tissue. But I've come in from the bottom rib. I've come back towards the spinous processes. And where I feel the tissue starting to become harder in nature, I'm going to press in and up. And quite often, if you're on the trigger point, you can use your thumb to palpate too. I'm using my finger so that you can see where I am. If you press in and up slightly, often the client will wince very slightly, or they might say, oh, that area is uncomfortable. Then in those instances, we'll know that we're on that trigger point area. Once we've found where that trigger point is, we want to compress it for about 30 to 60 or even 90 seconds. So we need to make sure that we're holding a firm pressure. This is a really strong muscle. Okay, so just me holding in here, I'm not gonna create enough pressure for the client. But what I could do is I could use two fingers together. So I've got my first finger pressing in, then I'm going to use my middle finger to reinforce that first finger, and now I can press in and up. Alternatively, what I could do is I could use my knuckle. I'm trying not to close off from the camera here, so I'm using my knuckle like so, and I'm pressing into the tissue, okay? Another way that we could compress that trigger point, remember to have the way that we've identified it, we've come from the bottom rib, we've followed the rib along, we're feeling for the muscle tissue as we work back towards the spinous process. Okay, another way that I could compress it is by using my elbow. In this instance, I'm gonna lean over the client slightly. I'm bringing my elbow into that area and then I'm going to reinforce with my other hand. Okay, we could do this from the other side of the body as well. So if I was standing the same side, so if I was um, focusing on my client on this side, I could place my knuckle in and again reinforce the wrist here so that I can now lean in with my body weight.
Okay, I could also use my elbow from the same side here into that space. And again, I can now lean in with my body weight. We don't want the client moving away from you too much. So you might then want to reinforce with one hand here. Okay, so the aim here is to compress that trigger point for about 30, 60, or even 90 seconds to create that ischemic response, which is where we're pushing the blood flow out of the area, we're triggering the body to think it's been re-injured, and then when we release that pressure, the blood flow runs back into the area, triggering a relaxation response in the tissue. So this was our quadratus lumborum psoas common trigger point area. Okay, so again, remember, with different clients it's going to be slightly different placement but as a general we're feeling for the bottom rib we're coming in from the bottom rib we're palpating around that area and we're pressing for maximal tenderness okay so you might want to press or palpate a couple of areas first before you hit that key trigger point and this trigger point if your client is experiencing generalized lower back pain is often active so whilst we're treating that wider lower back area whilst we're treating the glutes whilst we're treating the hamstrings for generalized lower back pain we're palpating for key trigger points here and we would bo treat both sides okay so that was for the lower back area the gluteals um, common trigger point in the glutamus maximus might also be active if our client has generalized lower back pain. And that trigger point is literally right in the middle of glutamus maximus. Now again, from here, you would be palpating for areas of maximal tenderness. Obviously your clients are all gonna be different shapes and, uh, shapes and sizes. So we're looking at the shape of the gluteals, we're looking for the size and we're aiming to palpate right in the middle of the glutamus maximus. Now again, the glutamus maximus is really strong. So we might want to use the knuckle in order to compress that area, but more often than not, um, then we would use the elbow in the middle of the glute max. Okay, so again, elbow, um, bony protrusion um, is going to compress the trigger point for 30 to 60 or even 90 seconds. And then we want to reinforce with our other hand here. We don't want the shoulder being too far away from the elbow. We want ideally the shoulder over the elbow so that we can use our body weight to compress that trigger point. Okay, so again, common trigger point technique, we're holding for 30 seconds as a minimum. More often than not, 60 seconds, and in those stubborn trigger points, we might hold that compression for about 90 seconds. So quadratus lumborum, um, psoas, common trigger point, because the QL and the psoas come in together, um, and we'll often find that this is active in lower back pain, along with our glutamus maximus, common trigger point. Okay, then we're gonna move up the body. So a common trigger point, we will also find which might be associated with restricted movement around the shoulder joint. Um, it might also be active if the client is slightly kyphotic or they have a lot of tension um, in the mid thoracic region. And this trigger point here is on the middle of the back of the scapula. Okay, on and right in the middle of the intraspinatus muscle. Okay, which is right in the middle of the back of the scapula. Again, um, with this trigger point, it might be slightly higher, it might be slightly lower. But at first, look at the shape and size of your client's scapula area, and you're going to palpate right in the middle there. Get feedback from your client first when you're experimenting with identifying these common trigger points. Okay, because for some people it might be right in the middle, other people it might be a little bit more inferior um, or lower on the scapula, and other people it might be slightly higher on the scapula. Okay, then again, once you've identified where this trigger point is, then you're going to compress that area. So remember to help you to identify that trigger point, you're feeling for the tissue, 
does it feel tighter than the rest of the tissue around it? When you press it, does that increase your client's pain or discomfort level? And when it comes to discomfort levels, um, we're looking for about a seven on a scale of one to 10. One being no discomfort or no pain, 10 being lots of discomfort or lots of pain. Okay, so we're roughly identifying for about a seven here. Again, we could hold this down with a digit, but we'd want to reinforce with our other digit. Okay, or we might want to use the thumb to compress that trigger point. But again, if we're using the thumb, we make sure that your thumbs don't hyperextend and put too much pressure into the joint. So here, to help to keep a slight bend in the finger, uh, in the thumb, sorry, you might want to reinforce with the finger. This is a um, more delicate area, so the tissue isn't, or the muscle tissue isn't as dense as in the lower back area. So we don't need to create just, you know, quite as much force here to compress. We could, again, also use that knuckle, so pushing down. And if we were using the knuckle here, we might want to reinforce with the hand. Okay, so this was our common trigger point right in the middle of the back of the scapula, um, which is on the infraspinatus muscle. Okay, which could be associated with restricted range of motion in the latimus dorsi, um, tension in the mid-thoracic area, along with restricted um, range of motion at the shoulder joint too. Just along from there, so this is infraspinatus in the middle of the back of the scap. Okay, and just along there, we might also have a common trigger point in the rhomboid area or the mid thoracic. So the rhomboids sit underneath the mid fibers of the trapezius. Okay, so you might find that, that trigger is on either the more superficial or the deep layer. But this is often on the just um, more medial of the border of the scapula. So palpate for the border of your client's scapula and they're always really interesting. Some are quite small, some are quite large. So feel for your client's scap border and then come in very slightly and you'll feel the muscle tissue. Again, palpate just above the area, palpate just below the area, but often that trigger point is in line with the um, infraspinatus trigger point. And again here, we're going to compress once we've identified there where that is. Again, getting feedback from the client. Okay, so we could, at the moment, you can see here, I'm not being very good with my thumbs, so my knuckle here is taking quite a lot of pressure. Um, I'm locking out on my knuckle there, so I'd want to soften both of those, and to help me maintain that pressure, I can then reinforce with my other thumb here. Whole time we're distracting the client as we're holding that compression um, and chatting to them. Okay, then our um, final trigger point, which is really common in a lot of people, is right in the middle of the upper traps. This is often a really strong trigger point, so roughly about here. This one is associated with restricted range of motion at the neck. Um, and also commonly associated with tension headaches um, and also clients that might grind their teeth um, or clench their jaw, this can also trigger this trigger point here to be quite active. So this is a really strong trigger point. Most people, we tend to carry our stress in our shoulders, don't we? So if we look at our clients and their shoulder girdles or their shoulders are up by their ears, this is probably tight here. So with this one for compression, you want to be able to come to the head side of the client. Okay, if you're using your thumb, you want to push down with a strong compression there. Keep the um, knuckles slightly bent here, and we're pushing downwards with our pressure into the tissue. Again, I'm then going to reinforce with my other thumb to hold that pressure down. Okay, so it's useful to try to move away from the thumbs once you've identified that trigger point as well though. So coming in with the knuckle is going to be really useful here. So look for where, to help you to identify it, look where your client's AC joint is, okay, the acromioclavicular joint. Then look 
where the neck space starts here. And the trigger point is roughly about halfway between those two points, roughly halfway between C-spine and the AC joint. So palpate that halfway point first and then go either side of it to find that maximal area of tenderness. So again, from here, we are going to use the knuckle, then we want to press in, but we then want to reinforce. And the nice thing with the knuckle here is that we can tuck that elbow into the side and use our body weight to compress that trigger point. So I'm just moving my hand out of the way, but it's nice to keep the hand there to guide where that knuckle is gonna stay. But I'm just moving my hand out of the way so that you can see where my knuckle is. And you can just see how we've compressed into that trigger point by using your body weight. Okay. So again, as with those other trigger points, 30 to 60 or even 90 seconds of compression there. Okay, so just to identify where that trigger point again was, so C-spine, AC joint, and roughly about halfway between the two. If this trigger point in the upper traps is active, then quite often or you know, um, is creating that sensation or discomfort for the client, um, quite often the levator scapula um, or levator scapulae trigger point might be active too. So the muscle of the levator scap comes down from C-spine and it inserts into the superior angle of the scapula. So if the shoulders are up by the ears, that muscle is going to be in a short and tight position. So therefore, it might, be, might have created a trigger point. So to identify that, what we're going to do is come in slightly more medially from that upper trap trigger point and slightly down and we're going to feel where the superior angle of the scapula is or that top angle of the scapula is and palpate around that region and you might find that common uh, levator scap trigger point. Again from here it's quite strong so I would come to the head side of the client here and press downwards into the tissue being mindful of my joints. Again, using that discomfort scale to make sure you're roughly about a six or a seven because we don't want the client to be in too much discomfort because then that's going to create more muscle contraction and the client's going to find it difficult to relax. Okay, so to identify levator scap trigger point, we are identifying where the upper traps one is first, then coming in towards C-spine slightly and slightly down. Okay, looking for that superior angle of the scapula. Okay, so that was our placement or identification of some of the common trigger points in the wider back area. So remember we can develop trigger points absolutely anywhere, but when we're new to trying to feel for trigger points, it's useful to try to identify where these common ones are first to get used to the feel of the trigger point, and then we become more quick um, at identifying wider trigger points in the rest of the body as well. Okay, so just just to recap, we did the quadratus lumborum psoas, common trigger point, by identifying the bottom rib and coming in towards the spinous process or the SPs. We looked at the common gluteus maximus trigger point, which is in the middle of the gluteus maximus. Both of these might be active um, or create that sensation and be tight if the client is experiencing generalized lower back pain. We also looked at the common trigger point in the middle of the back of the scapula, levator scap trigger point, and we looked at the trigger point around the rhomboid mid thoracic region as well, along with upper traps and levator scapulae. Okay, so palpating for maximal area of tenderness and holding that compression using your thumb, using your finger, using your knuckle or using your elbow for 30, 60 or even 90 seconds.